Well good afternoon everybody, um, this is Lee, your virtual airline pilot, back with you for another review. Uh, this is the first of this week's reviews and we are in southern France uh, on the Côte d'Azur and this is Marseille Airport in southern France. Uh, Lima Foxtrot Mike Lima. This is the payware scenery by France VFR. It's a well-known developer. It's been developing for flight simulator versions for many years. This is for the PC version of Flight Simulator 2020. Download is 465 megs and it installs as uh, just under a gig really, 966 meg. Uh, it's available from both Orbix and Sim Market. And I give you the Sim Market prices, there's not a lot in it really. Um, it's nine euros and ninety cents, which equates to roughly nine dollars and seventy six cents US, or eight pounds and sixty three pence UK. US and UK prices are estimates, and they do include tax or VAT, which of course may vary depending on the country of your purchase. Um, it's a really good price for a scenery that's actually been quite nicely done. There's a lot in here and any of the that have been to this air part of the world will know that it's um, quite a beautiful place to go into and the airport itself is very very nicely done quite nicely laid out not as detailed as some but it does look quite nice and we're going to explore it so there we go um, as usual let's start with some history so at Marseille Provence Airport Lima Foxtrot Mike Lima is a public use international airport operated by the Marseille Provence Chamber of Commerce and Industry, uh, known as the CCI. It is located 17 miles or 27 kilometers northwest of the city of Marseille in the territory of Marignan in the Provence Alps Côte d'Azur region of France. Uh, my French isn't brilliant as I hope uh, I'm pronouncing things okay for you. In the 1920s and 1930s, Marignan Airport, as it was known then, was one of the main airports in France where flying boats operated. In addition, it's briefly served as a terminal for Pan American World Airways, often known as Pan Am, the Clipper flying boats. Other flying boat operators were Aerospatial and Air Union, the latter moving over from Antibes in 1931. Marignan was also a production site for hydroplanes by Lyon L. Olivier and is the fixed wing base for Sécurité Civile, the aerial firefighting division of the French Ministry of the Interior. And you'll also find the head office of Airbus helicopters located on this airport. In September 2006, the airport opened its new terminal for budget airlines. In 2013, the airport expanded its shopping and dining options with 30 new shops and restaurants, among which was the very first Burger King restaurant in France since 1997. Over 35 airlines operate into and out of Marseille, including the national carrier Air France, EasyJet, British Airways, Ryanair, Lufthansa and TAP Air Portugal, to name but a few. Interesting fact, on the 26th of December 1994, Air France Flight 8969 with 236 people on board arrived in Marseille after being hijacked two days earlier by four men claiming to be from the armed Islamic group GIA at Haruri Bendin Airport in Algiers. After 15 hours on the ground and a breakdown in negotiations, the French Special Forces stormed the aircraft. In the ensuing firefight, all four hijackers were killed, while three crew, 13 passengers and nine members of the Special Forces were injured. The French registered Airbus A300, registration Foxtrot Golf Bravo Echo Charlie, was completely written off in the incident. So there you go, that's some history for you. This place also has been around quite a while um, and been home to um, some very interesting organisations. Let's uh, now go and have a look at runways and navigation aids. So once again runways, we've lowered the light again so you can see the runways clearly. Marseille Airport operates two main runways. Runway 1 3 left 3 1 white measures 11,286 feet or 3,440 meters in length and is made from asphalt. Runway 1 3 right 3 1 left, which is here, 
is the shorter of the two, measuring 7,776 feet or 2,370 meters. Again, is also made from asphalt. The airport itself lies at an elevation of 70 feet or 21 meters. Runway 13 left, and we're looking down the throat of it now, is equipped with an instrument landing system certified for Category 3B low visibility operations. So if the weather's near zero, this is the runway you're coming in on, subject to wind, of course. This runway also features high intensity airport lighting system version two, and on the charts it shows no precision approach path indicators or other such lighting aids. And this is all correct. Here you can see the runway has center line, um, the intensity lighting system, edge runway end identifier lights here. Here's your displaced threshold, and you've got standard approach lighting. And as you can see, no pappies or vasos either side of the runway. So here we are, we've moved to look at runway 13 right, which features a standard instrument landing system, runway wind end identifier lights, and precision approach path indicators on the left side of the runway. And that's all correct. Here you've got end identifier lighting, there's the threshold. No center line on this runway, or center line lighting I should say, but there's your precision approach path indicators on the left. Let's go up the other end and look at the other two ends of the runways. So here we are looking down the throat of runway 31 right, which also again features a standard instrument landing system, runway end identifier lights and precision approach path indicators on the left side of the runway. And as you can see a huge displaced threshold, which um, clearly will help you to in takeoff runs. So runway 31 left here features runway end identifier lights and precision approach path indicators, again on the left side of the runway. Approach options for this runway include RNAV approach and unusually a vertical maneuvering with prescribed tract or VPT approach option. So there you go, two runways, four landing and takeoff directions. Um, there's also quite a wide list of um, operating rules at the airport, particularly for low visibility operations. But there you go, everything is pretty much as per the charts, quite pleased about that. So let's go look at jetways. Okay, so as usual, we've uh, positioned the tug so it's not in the way of the jetway. Let's give the jetway a test and see whether either one of them connects to the aircraft. Jetway looks really nicely weathered actually. Oh, so connected, but once again gone right through the skin. Um, it's no worse than any others, um, but at least it works. Let's get a closer look. There you can see it's uh, nicely connected, no problem at all. There's some nice weathering on here. All looks really quite good. Okay, so let's disconnect it. There she goes. Yep, everything looks good there. Jetway works fine. So that takes care of jetways. As you can see, there are a number of jetways and um, they do seem to work. Um, no problems at all really with the jetways. So let's get down to the ramp, have a tour around and see what we've got here. So we start with a tour across the ramp. Now there's an awful lot to see at this airport. Um, even though it's not as highly developed as some, there's a lot of detail in and around it. So I'm going to try not to make this too long, but let you have a close look at the way the airport's been modelled and it's beautifully done. As you can see the tarmac's been done nicely, the appropriate oil slicks, um, jetways look good, the building main terminal looks wonderful, it's as per real life of having checked some of the charts and uh, images. And as you can see the ground markings are just the sort of standard that we expect to see. Lots of clutter, um, everything seems to fit in. Let's um, move across here towards the control tower and you've got the old and the new tower there as you can see. And again, even the tops of the buildings have been done, which is great. Don't think there's anything in the tower by the looks of it. But we will pass through it. Yeah, as you can see, nothing there in the tower. I 
and this is pretty stunning. Okay, lots of reliance on photo ground scenery from the default, but as with other airports I've looked at, it works because it fits. Um, I love the detail here. The, uh, the fauna looks good, trees that aren't overlapping onto the road. And as we get closer to the coast here, you can see lots of little individual bits and pieces that have added that really make this airport work. So heading back towards their side here onto the ramp, as you can see, you've got the same attention to detail. Loads of uh, typical skid marks where aircraft have turned and manoeuvred. Again, lots of um, ground clutter that really fits. And there you go, looking at the other side. That's just, it's very, very nice. It's a, a beautifully done airport. It's just lovely. Lots of ground clutter all in the right places. Nothing sticking out into the taxiway, which is a really good thing. Some nice light aircraft there to the left. So we just swing across Terminal 2 here. As you can see, it's very, very nice. I particularly like the way the trees fit in. Nothing overlapping onto the road. It all looks very, very nice. Here's the old control tower. I love the way the buildings look. It'd be interesting to see what this looks like at night. Let's just cross over to land side. Okay, everything's nicely detailed. Car park's in low resolution default, which is a pity, but then you can't have everything. But it really does look quite nice. Right down to the fuel petrol station here. And once again, trees in the right place, not going onto the road. This looks very, very nice. And even the Ibis Hotel has been modelled there, together with the swimming pool. Ibis is a well-known hotel chain, we've got them in the UK. And the Pullman Hotels. So once again, swinging across the car park at land side here, looking at the area further up here. As you can see, lots of little buildings and little bit additions and attention to detail. Okay, it's built on uh, default um, ground photo scenery, which um, would have been nicer to have it properly modeled, but um, I'm not complaining, very, very nice. There's lots of detail for you to get to look at here and enjoy. Although again, I repeat what I've said before, as pilots coming into this airport, there's nothing you will be concerned with. But it's really lovely to have it. It's very, very nice to have it. So helicopters there. Uh, got some flags there, I don't think they're animated. While we're here, we'll come out towards the runway, taxiway, look at the signage, they look nice. The ground looks well sort of cluttered and um, old as it were, but then that's the old taxiway there that's got the closed sign on it. So there you can see just an example of some of the signage. The concrete looks great. I love these cracks in the concrete. Looks very realistic. And you can just see there we've got wigwags operating and you'll probably see them better when we go to dusk. But you've got the blue airfield edge lights. Um, the signage is great and we've got center line lights here by the looks of it. We'll see whether they're lit up later on. Signage looks great. Let's go on to the runway. So just a quick look down to the runway there, as you can see, it's all really impressive. This looks to be more concrete than asphalt. Maybe it's a mixture. There's the windsock and there's the terminal area. 
So, what we'll do now is look at the terminal land side very quickly, but I'm going to pass over the helicopter base here. Some nice people there. Again, some very good modelling on the buildings. The helicopters look good. You've got people stood there, static people as well. This, this looks really nice. I'm actually quite surprised, nicely surprised to see this. And the level of detail is really, really good. Okay, the flags are animated, but they look good. The outside of the buildings look great. I doubt that there's any modelling inside, and I'm probably not going to bother have a look, um, because I'm pretty certain there isn't. But um, the quality of, of exterior modelling um, and the clutter, helicopters, ground material, is really, really good. And you can see what looks like a bit of parallaxing on the windows there. Just speed this up a little bit. And again, loads of ground clutter, most of it very highly appropriate. Got a couple of our snow vehicles there. So let's turn land side of the terminal and see what we can see. It looks really pleasant. <laughs> it's been very nicely done. Car park there. I mean, this is typical France VFR stuff. They do some lovely work. Um, I had many of their sceneries in P3D. Um, but this looks very nice. Be interesting to see what this looks like at dusk. See how many of these lights come on. Okay, nice terminal signs there. You've got people stood around. It looks good. It does look good. Building work going on there. Great um, buses, bus models and stuff. Here's Terminal 2. Again, lots of appropriately placed people to give this a little bit of atmosphere. Really quite impressed with it. I love the trees. And strangely enough, it's, it's a lot easier to sort of forgive the low resolution ground textures because it, it seems to work. Obviously, it's going to look a lot better the higher you go, but it just works. It's great. Very nice, exceptionally well done. The outside of the buildings has been have been beautifully modelled. Just shows you what you can do if you're not, not prepared to go and do too much, but look at what's been done. It just if you do it right, it just works. Very nice indeed. Okay, so we'll stop here and we'll take a few shots of close-ups of the terminal for you. And we've got some animation. This is really good. I didn't expect that. Some of these people are animated. Very, very nice. The signage is good. I mean, look at that. that that's really impressive. It's very, very good. It's very, very lovely. I really do like this sort of thing. Very nice. Very impressed. So here you've got the rental car agencies. Um, parallax work on the windows to give you the impression that uh, there's something going on side. So it's, it's really good. And if you look right across here, I mean, look at the um, work on the outside of this multi-story. This um, is a whole new level of, impressive, of impressiveness for me. I really didn't expect it to be this good. So a quick look right up close here and as you can see the parallax pretty much works, it's not too bad at all. Looks better further away, it's not really designed to be looked at close up. But I'm impressed that um, the wording here is still really crisp, even up close. So here's a shot at the front land side of the building on the departures. 
Again, some nice little people animations going on. I'm going to whiz inside the building just to see if there is anything. I doubt that there is, but we'll see. Okay, as you can see, the inside of the building is partly modelled, but it isn't really. Same in the other direction. But you know what? I have no problem with it at all. Um, that what they've done outside visually really makes up for all of this. So a quick high level shot there looking across land side into air side and you can see the level of detail is lovely. There's so much in here that they, they make this airport look really good. It's really, really nice. So let's have a quick look from inside the cockpit. So here we are in the 737-800 and you can see this is the view you'll get when you pull up to a stand during the daytime. View from the captain's side. Nicely done jetways here. You can see this again parallax thing where you can see through the side. This looks really really good. And a quick view from the first officer there out through the windows. It does look very well done. The signage on the terminal stands look good. Stairways look great. Um, and I, it, it works for me. It looks good. I'm quite impressed. So let's drop it down to dusk now and have a look at this view and we'll have a closer look and see what the lighting's like on these buildings. I'm hoping for good things. Okay, quarter to seven in the evening and once again I tried really hard to try and get the point where the lights just come on and uh, I'm impressed. Look at the reflections on the buildings. Lighting looks really good. Um, looking at land side, I can see quite a number of Asobo globes, which is a pity con considering the number of light poles that they've got. But uh, anyway, we'll look at that in a minute. Let's go into air side and see what you're looking like from your point of view. So here we are on stand one. I think it's stand one. Um, the lighting looks fine. Um, the ramp lighting's not overdone. It's still fairly early. Um, but uh, the, the buildings, this, this reflection, the way this has been done, all looks really quite nice. It looks pretty realistic for me. Um, ends of the jetways are lit, which is a nice touch. Um, and everything else, I mean, it looks fine. Uh, looking in the other direction there, again, plenty of um, ground lighting, looks really good. Loads of areas that are lit up, including bits of building here. Let's take a quick tour. So the lighting is quite subtle, as I would expect it to be, but it's been done really nicely and the buildings have been created and modelled in such a way that the lighting makes it work. It's really quite impressive. I mean, it really looks as though there's something going on inside those uh, buildings there. Here's the helicopter base we looked at earlier. I mean, that looks great, doesn't it? So helicopters aren't lit, but there you go. Let's head out now slightly across the runway and taxiways. And as you can see, green centerline lighting, blue airfield edge lights, all the signage you need is correctly um, shown. It all looks good. Let's have a look at the wigwags. And there you go, as you get close you can see the wigwags. Quick look down the taxiway and the runway and as you can see plenty of lighting, it's not going to be a problem taxiing around or finding your way around in the darkness here. So a quick look at some of the outbuildings, slightly off the airport. Again you can see there's modelling here that's been done. It does look nice. Okay, again, we're smitten with Sobo Globes, which is a pity. But not going to complain too much about it. Lighting's nicely subtle. But it's, it's fine. It's been lovely. Lo nicely done. Get down to these other buildings down at the other end here.
but you can see when you look at these buildings the models okay they're fairly basic but the windows are parallaxed so it really does look as though um, there's something going on I find that very impressive and I've done it really nicely here so I'll slow right down here now if you look down here look we've got drop lighting on this hangar that is lovely and look at the way the windows are and coming across to this hangar here I don't know if it's been used because it's marked with an, a taxiway, but it's marked with an X. But again, it's visually very, very good. Here we're actually using the proper light stanchions. Let's go inside and just see if there's anything inside. I doubt that there will be, but we'll have a look. No, there isn't. Okay, no problem there. Once again, more bits and pieces here, private aircraft area. All subtly lit, there's partial lighting here. And it's lovely, another big hangar. Beautifully done. So coming across the airside to Terminal 2 here, just to look at the lighting towards the tower. Very nice, very subtle, really nicely done. Speed up a little bit. But you can see the way it works on the buildings. It makes them look as though there's something going on. A little disappointed the same isn't true of the control tower there. So travelling along land side, I do like that man lift there with the engineer, that's a nice interesting touch. Don't think I've seen that before in a scenery. Really well lit airport sign there. The car models are very very good and the people models I have to say are very exceptionally good. I wonder where the Burger King is. <laughs> Just get a little close up of this area again and see how beautifully it's lit and how well this parallax business works on the windows. Very nice, very nice indeed. It all looks really good. And there we are, as you can see, as we come up a little higher, you can see just how subtle the lighting is everywhere. Not everything's lit, but um, most of what you need is certainly lit. And there's some lovely, subtle bits and pieces going on here. We're just tracking back into airside here. I mean, this, um, the way they've done the outside of the terminal, this just works. It looks lovely in the low light. Very pleasant indeed. I'm definitely going to fly in here. Really impressive. So there we are, now we've pulled away from the terminal, I want to drop it down tonight and see how much of an improvement or how much the light comes up, if indeed it does. Okay, so just after 9pm local time here, it's October, and as you can see, the lighting has come up slightly. There don't seem to be any green lead-in lights going towards the stands, the parking area. Let's just spin around a bit here. 
Okay, so the terminal ramp is lit in two places. You've got the lighting here on the stands and you've got lighting at the back of the stands here as well. So once you come in and find your way into here, you shouldn't have a problem. I was a bit worried that you wouldn't get any lead-in lighting going towards here. Um, you will need your nose gear light, but it's not really going to be an issue. But as you can see, the lighting here at night looks great. Just as good as it does during the dusk. You have the same um, effect on the windows here. And again, looking in the other direction, everything looks really good here. The lighting looks wonderful. See how the subtle lighting works with the buildings here. Makes you think that, that, you know, that, you, that they're done inside when in fact they're actually not. It's been beautifully modelled. Let's just come out across the runways and taxiways here. As you can see, lots of lighting is not really going to be a serious issue. What I want to see is if there is any uh, or any vehicles either entering or on the runway. So I can't see anything there. Let's look in the other direction. So we'll take a quick pass up towards the end of this main, the main runway here. Lots of bits and pieces going on there, but nothing I can see going anywhere near the runways, which is good. Hats off to the France BFR for doing that. Very, really impressed with that. So we'll go down to the threshold here and have a look at the approach into the runway. As you can see, signage is plentiful and accurate. Centerline lights, blue airfield edge lights. And there's the signage and there's the wigwags for you. Very, very good. So once again a view from inside the cockpit and as you can see this looks really nice it looks quite real in a way it's, it's, it's just very very nicely done when you don't want to do a terminal inside or make it as detailed as others have this looks good quick view from the captain side and again you've got this nice situation where they've kind of given you lighting or false lighting inside the jetway which makes it look so much more realistic. And looking the other direction across the first officer's side. Really very, very nice. So here we are, quarter to nine in the morning and the sun has come up and it's sort of just after dawn. Um, time to give you my thoughts. Um, okay, I've tried to make this a fairly short review. Again, this is another scenery that's got so much in it. Um, considering they haven't developed the inside of the terminals or done much with the inside of the buildings they've done so much on the airport itself with in terms of ground clutter vehicles um, private aeroplanes and this work that they've done on the windows of many of the building structures looks really really good especially in the low light at night but detail on the ground is excellent it's the airport spread out over quite a wide area and they've done a lot of work outside of the airport environment as well which makes this look really fantastic in my opinion so what do i think yeah it's really impressive and uh, by the way just a quick disclaimer here i bought this scenery i didn't um i wasn't sent it by france vfr free for review so as ever the opinions and comments in this video are my own and they've not been influenced by the developer or anything else i think it's a lovely scenery you could argue it's almost a steal nine pound uh, nine euros 90 or just over eight quid uk there's so much in this airport um, and for the pilot everything you need to make this look as real as you'd expect it to be when you come into land or taxi out for takeoff it's all there um, typically French, typically France VFR. Um, they've carried over the skills they've had in P3D and FSX into the new simulator and they've done a nice job in my opinion. I like the scenery and I will be flying in here. It's very, very impressive. Very happy to recommend it. 
So there you go, Marseille Airport, France. Lima Foxtrot, Mike Lima. It's a payware scenery by France BFR, well-known developer. As far as I know, this is a PC version only at the moment. This is version 1. Download is 465 meg and it installs just under a gig, 966 megabyte. And you can get it from both Orbix and Sim Market. Sim Market prices nine euros ninety cents, which equates to nine dollars seventy six cents US, or eight pounds sixty three UK. As I said, US and UK prices are estimates based on the euro price, and they do include VAT, or tax, or VAT, which of course will vary depending on which country you're in when you make your purchase. It's a lovely scenery, thoroughly recommended. So there you go. Thanks very much for joining me, folks. This is Lee, your virtual airline pilot, wrapping up another review of yet another really wonderful scenery. Um, it's all getting a bit much for me now. There's so much to look at here and, and so many other places. They're really, really good. Um, it's a very nice pro product. Very happy to recommend it. So thanks for joining me on this review. Uh, if you've been on the fence about this, I hope this review has helped you. Tried to keep it a bit shorter than my usual um, plethora of videos and um, make no apologies for the length of some of them. There's so much detail in some of these sceneries that we, you really need to be looking at. So yeah, fantastic scenery, happily recommend it. Um, join me later this week, um, I've got a video coming out where I'll be looking at um, Syracuse Airport, um, which is another brand new scenery from Vertical Sim. So much in that scenery too, but again I'm going to try and keep it down in terms of length, but there's just so much to see, it's a stunning scenery. And also look out for my um, helicopter tour, which has just been um, put up um, yesterday I believe where I look at Paros and Naxos the island airport out in Greece we take the Bell 47 helicopter I'll put a link in the description below if you haven't seen that video so thank you again for watching thank you for your support and thank you to all my subscribers um, this is Lee I'm saying bye bye for now I'll see you in the next review video bye bye now take care